Welcome to Texas Haunted Channel everyone. In today's video I'm going to be doing a how to detailed instruction swap your transmission in your 99 Honda Civic. The method also works from 1988 all the way to 2005 I believe um, for swapping the transmissions out. And once you get one done you pretty much figure out how to do it on any car. But uh, on this specific one I have second, third, and fifth gear synchro issues. Um, if you didn't see my drag strip video I was having issues getting it into third and this has been happening for a while so I need to just swap it out. So I went to Budget Wrench Apart in Belton, Texas, um, found this at the local salvage yard and it seems to be in pretty good shape. So I have a three day warranty so my goal is to just get this one out, swap that one in, put some fresh fluids in it and see if it grinds under normal conditions. And then we'll put it through some harder conditions, giving it higher RPM to see if it grinds under higher RPMs. Because that's what this was having. This would also do it at low RPM, so it kind of just did it all the time. But uh, yeah, so basically we're just going to swap these out and I'll go over the things you'll need to do it. Alright, so this is the variety of things that you will need. Um, we have a sledge, a 3 8 ratchet, a Phillips head screwdriver that is about the same diameter as the roll pin, so that way we can knock it out of the shift linkage. Flathead, take off intake pipes or whatever. A 12 and a 17 wrench, 32 millimeter socket, 19, 17, and 14 deep well sockets. A 10 millimeter with extensions. The extensions aren't necessary, but it makes it a little easier. Um, the 3 8 breakover bar is pretty pretty necessary part getting CV nuts off. Um, it's not required to have an impact but it does help a lot. And a drain pan, funnel, and a four-way. Four ways just in case you don't have an impact. Um, but yeah, that's about the tools we'll need. You will also need a good jack and a good jack stand. Uh, this jack is about five years old and it still works good. It's from Harbor Freight. That jack stand is about six years old and it came from Walmart and they've been working great on everything I've used them on. So. Um, just make sure to get quality parts to lift it up and you want to be as safe as possible. The first step will be to jack the car up, secure the jack stand, lower the jack onto the jack stand, and take the wheel off. Before I do that, I like to break the lug nuts loose. I don't take them off with it on the ground, just break them loose because it makes it a lot easier. I'll show you what I mean. I'll repeat this process on the other side as well. Step two will be to put the drain pan directly underneath the transmission and drain the fluid out. To drain the fluid in the transmission, you'll just take a 3 8 ratchet. It sticks on there perfectly to the drain plug, and then you can loosen it up and drain the fluid out. For step three, we're gonna take the CV axles out of the transmission. Um, this can be kind of difficult if the car hasn't had a CV axle replaced in a while. Um, so spray some penetrant in there before even attempting it and let it soak. But you can take the flat head that you have, tap it in like that, because this is pushed in, it's notched in there. And then we can uh, start to loosen this. It works best with an impact, but um, I'm gonna show you how to do it with just the breakover bar and the 32 millimeter socket and a screwdriver. We're gonna take the screwdriver, we can place it here or in here to wedge it in place, and then we'll go ahead and loosen this up. Just like that. Doesn't always work that easily, but don't give up on it and try not to round it out. Um, if it doesn't work after penetrant and you use a breakover bar and a cheater bar on top of that, you might have to hit it with some heat to heat it up and then it should come right out. All right, the best way I've found to removing the CV axle is to take the strut off. A lot of other people go for the lower control arm or lower ball joint, but I don't want to damage the lower ball joint and I don't want to do the lower control arm method. Whether it's a wrench and a wrench or a ratchet and a wrench, it doesn't matter, just break it loose. 
Once you got it broke loose, you can take it off. Gently tap it through. And make sure to put them together so you know where they're both at. Next, you'll remove the brake line with these two 10 millimeters that are holding it on. Next is to take the 17 millimeter nut off up here. This is also one of those that you might need to spray ahead of time. This is where the sledgehammer comes in. You'll want to hit on the side of the knuckle instead of on the bolts where the threads go because that will damage the threads and then you won't be able to get the nut on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit right here. Now the easiest way to do this is to loosen up the 14s in the engine bay and move this up out of the way and then re-tighten them just so it's up out of the way. Or you can leave it there and just maneuver around it. Now you'll remove the two nuts up top, which are 14 millimeters, and then you can pull the strut out. Now that the strut's out of the way, you can go ahead and remove this CV axle from the hub. Now that we've got the CV axle removed from the hub, we're going to go right here at the transmission. And while we're down here, we're going to go ahead and put the drain plug back in since it's completely drained out. Now that we got the drain plug back in, we're going to focus our attention to right where the CV axle meets the transmission. We're going to pop it out of there. I prefer using a really big flathead screwdriver, but you can use a wrench and get it behind there. And give it one good pop, maybe two, and it should come out. Then we can pull it out the rest of the way over at the wheel hub. You never just want to yank the axle out because it could come apart at the boot and then rip apart and then you'll have to reboot it. Um, this is also a really good time to inspect your CV axle for any tears or wear and replace it if needed. Repeat the same process we did on the driver's side to the passenger side and then we can move to step four. Step four is pretty simple. You're going to basically remove anything that will be in the way. So we're going to take this intake pipe off here, which is a couple flat heads. In your case, it may be factory and have a Phillips head or an eight or 10 millimeter clamp. You're gonna to wanna to remove this to get it out of the way. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. A very important step I failed to mention was the negative battery post cable does need removed. Um, we're gonna take the starter out next, so that will be step five. Using the new transmission as a reference, there's going to be a 14 millimeter bolt on top of the starter and a 14 millimeter bolt that goes on the bottom. The one on the bottom is really long and you'll have to get in there with like a ratchet or a ratchet wrench and take it out that way. And this one is a short one. So just make sure to get both those 14 millimeters out and then we can move the starter out of the way. Step six is to remove anything that is attached to the transmission, such as brackets, ground wires, and even the clutch slave cylinder. As for the clutch slave cylinder, it is two 12 millimeter bolts that hold it in. Easiest method I've found to remove them is a ratchet wrench. Now we will go ahead and just remove the clutch slave out of the way. All right, as for step seven, you're gonna to wanna to take that 12, ratchet wrench is the best, but a normal 12 will work. And you're gonna to wanna to remove the shift linkage stabilizer bar. Basically just remove that 12 out of there. 
Now this is an excellent time to inspect your bushings. These are polyurethane bushings. I'll put a link in the description. Um, I highly recommend replacing them. Even if you don't race your car, it just makes your transmission feel so much better when shifting. All right, with this little piece of rubber removed or moved back, you'll see the roll pin that I talked about earlier. Now basically on this step, what you're gonna wanna do is put that Phillips head screwdriver we talked about right up there and hit it with the sledge. All right, now that that's out, you wanna put the screwdriver in, shift it forward, pull the screwdriver out, and then pull the linkage out. All right, for step eight, you'll wanna support the transmission using your jack. You just want tension on it, you don't wanna jack it up. Then, you'll get a jack stand, and a two by four will go here, and you'll push it up to your oil pan. I do not have a two by four, but with these aluminum oil pans, they're pretty strong. Um, I should be okay. These D-series are pretty light and I've done it this way many, many times in the past with success. So I'm gonna do it this way, but I highly recommend you put a two piece of two by four so you don't dent your oil pan or break it. So now that it's like that, we're gonna go ahead and remove the 19 millimeter bolts on the backside of the transmission. All right, so here's the two 19 millimeter bolts that we'll be removing. And this one right here is a 17 millimeter. We'll remove all three of those and then go to the top side. Before we go up top, there is another bolt that's easier to get from the bottom. It's a 17 millimeter right here, um, right by the exhaust system. Um, there's typically also a bracket that goes on this side of the flywheel um, in a, pl a metal plate. You'll wanna take both of those off. I don't have that on mine, so I figured I'd mention it. But a uh, 17 millimeter right here, it's easier to get from the bottom, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that while we're down here. All right, now that we're up top, you can see where the starter was. Right next to it is a 19 millimeter bolt. You'll go ahead and remove that. Then we'll move on to step nine, removing the transmission mount and then the rest of the bolts. Step nine, remove the transmission mount. Um, we have 17 here, 17 there, and a 17 over here, which you can't see. But uh, we're gonna remove those three 17 millimeter bolts, and then we're going to hold the transmission just in case it starts to slip. Um, you've got the jack supported under it, and as soon as those bolts are out, the transmission's ready to go straight down. So um, you'll basically get those bolts out, and then we will lower the transmission down. transmissions out and uh, the clutch is a stage four six puck on an eight pound flywheel and it's brand new so I don't have to worry about that uh, the only thing I do have to do is take this throw out bearing off right there and transfer it over to the new transmission then we can reinstall the transmission in the same way we removed it so you'll basically just take those same steps and just put them in reverse and the transmission should be in um, another thing you want to make a note of are these dowel pins right here um, if they're damaged to the point where they won't go in the transmission right, 
he will have issues uh, stabbing it back to the transmission and he'll be fighting and getting mad at it. So sometimes what I do is I just take them out completely or just make sure they're in good shape. Make sure there's not dowel pins like this left on the engine side because then they'll be fighting each other and it won't go in. So just make sure to make a note of that. This is a good time to be using Best Lines No Squeak. I use this stuff on everything. There will be a link in the description to Best Line. You can get 20% off your entire purchase price. Um, so definitely consider checking that out. This has a thousand and one uses. I can even clean my gun with it. But I use this thing on all kinds of stuff. And this is a good time to kind of spray it in there. And get it nice and lubricated so that it has a very good uh, lubrication. You can also use white lithium grease or something other but I just use this stuff because I know it works. All right, when putting the transmission back in, make sure none of the wires will get pinched whenever you're putting it back up there. And this part can be difficult for some people. I've done enough of them that it pretty much comes easily, but you wanna make sure that the clutch alignment is perfect. Um, it makes it slide in way easier. But you'll basically get the transmission up, slide it in, kind of wiggle it around, and then put a couple bolts to hold it in place while you make sure it's all adjusted. If that doesn't work, go to the crank pulley, try to have it supported on this side. Um, it helps if you have two people. And then get the crank pulley and turn it while trying to stab it and it'll usually just go right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the transmission in. All right, everything's back together. The last step would be to add fluid. Um, I'll be adding through that hole right there. That's the speed sensor hole. Then we'll put the speed sensor in and connect it. Um, we'll add two and a half quarts is how much it takes. Once it starts coming out of that bolt right there, that's how you know it's full. So if you don't know how much um, fluid you have inside the transmission, and you don't want to overfill it, just make sure that's open. And as soon as it starts running out the side, it's full. Then you'll take that bolt and plug it back up. Uh, I'm basically just going to go ahead and fill it up, and then uh, we'll start it up and see how it sounds. Okay, so I'll be putting the fluid in with a long funnel and a like a big straw. You can get the straw piece at Walmart. They're really cheap. Um, it basically has a little black cap that goes on the end. Um, but this makes it easier to getting the fluid down there. I will be using Best Lines engine treatment. This stuff is amazing stuff. It's for engines, but on the manual transmissions of these older Hondas, um, you can use motor oil, 10W40. It's actually what they came with from the factory. Um, but they have Synchro Mesh. I've used it before, and it actually made my shifting worse. So I just stick with what I know works, and 10W40 does work really well for me. But I'll be adding some Best Line racing engine treatment. This stuff is amazing stuff, and I'll be doing a video on it soon. If you guys want some, link will be in the description. Coupon code DGUY20 gets you 20% off the entire purchase price. So definitely check it out and stay tuned for the videos of me testing this. It's amazing stuff. 
Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use this plain 10W40 and put it in. All right, everything looks good underneath. There's no leaks, no funky noises. So now I'm gonna go take it out for a drive. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, see if it grinds driving normal. And then I might get on it just to see if I can power shift the gear, but it's kind of pointless to try to speed right now because it's wet. But I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Well, there it is. It definitely uh, seemed to go through the gears pretty well. I didn't have any issues through first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. Um, I did granny shift quite a bit on those, but it is raining, so I was just like trying not to go too hard. Last thing I wanted to tell you is make sure to connect the ground wires that go to the frame. It's very important. Without those, the car will not run right or start. Um, if you do get it to start, it won't run very good. So make sure to connect those and uh, torque everything down, lug nuts, all that good stuff, and you should be good to go. But it's running pretty good, so I think it's almost time for the track. The next thing I have to do is put the belly pan on the bottom side and uh, mount those drag slicks up and head back and break the 13 like I know I can. So we're going to take this back to the track real soon. Transmission seems to be pretty good, so I got a good deal on this one. Um, and now we get to take this transmission over here and rebuild it and make it nice and solid. So uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button and uh, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. But that's it for this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. And as I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.